Hi, I'm Madison. And I'm Rainer. And welcome to our tiny home. Intro. Come and check out the inside of my tiny home. So welcome into our tiny home. The first thing we'll talk about is our fridge. So we have an ARB 12 volt fridge and it's just on a slide out. And what's great about this is it means you can grab your drink when you're outside the van or inside and it just opens up and we have everything there. So the advantage of that versus your conventional fridge is cold air sinks and falls out of a regular fridge. This keeps the cold air in. It locks in place when it's out, so it actually becomes a great footrest for lounging as well. Multi-purpose is critical for van life. So we'll just unlock and slide this back in and we'll explain the rest of the kitchen. So in a van, a fixed cooktop, it can be a little challenging. One, it means extra fuel sources, but it also means giving up counter space. So you notice for us, we opted to have all the clear space and considering we're so heavy on solar, we went with an induction cooktop. So that's just stored in this drawer here and it lets us pull out our cooktop and we have a plug outlet for it right here. And this lets us cook all of our meals. Induction is really quite energy efficient. It's fast to cook and quite easy. And this lets us put it away when we're done and keeps it simple. Moving on to our sink. Our sink's a really important piece. One, we wanted one that was deep enough that we could pile dishes, because you're lying if you say you don't drive with some dishes occasionally. And we also wanted a faucet that was multifunctional. One of the things I love about it is that it can fold flat. When every space is all spaces, it's a whole lot easier um, when you're able to push things out. So ours has two faucets to it. This controls the pressure, and then I can either use our spray nozzle, or I can use a conventional toast. So this sink has been great. It's a natural quartz sink, and that's meant to be microbacterial, uh, and it's been really easy to keep clean, and it's pretty hardy for all the bumps that we put it through um, with seven months on the road so far. So moving on to underneath our sink, this is some pretty important storage. It's also where we store our grey water tanks. For our system, um, we have two five gallon jugs that are our grey tanks that we can switch between. We opted for using these five gallon jugs for our grey system because it's fairly easy to grab one and carry it in and dump it in a pit toilet and other appropriate places. Um, so it's made it quite simple. We also store all of our cleaning products down here. We have a small garbage pail mounted to the side. My toilet paper is mounted here. I'll explain that later. In our tiny home, one of our criticals was having a toilet. We also wanted it to not eat, eat up a lot of space. So our solution is we have actually hidden underneath the bed. So here we're able to open this and have a pull-out toilet. So this is a, a nature's head composting toilet with spider handle. Uh, and the spider handle just means that it has a certain handle on it. It makes it a little smaller, and that's obviously critical for van life. And so this has been great. Not only does it make it uh, a low-profile hidden toilet, um, but it also has been very easy to use. And we've come up with a creative system to give us some privacy. And this is how we have a little bit of privacy in a very tiny home. A girl has got to have a well-organized closet, and Rainer has built me a fantastic one here. With doors that are able to swing right around, it makes it easier for having use of the full space. Um, we recently just redid the interior of this to add shelving units so that we could fit a few more things, like our new must-live-with Instant Pot. I kept closed hanging space because I still do work as a consultant and occasionally clients expect you to show up and look like a functioning member of society. Hanging clothes is essential for that. Above here, we also keep all of our bathroom stuff. We've designed it to be in a basket. It makes it easy to pull down and complete your morning and nighttime routine and then put it back away. In here we also keep our microfiber towels in their travel storage because those are space saving. Um, and we also bury all of our shoes underneath here when they're not wet. Having a full length mirror has been really handy. One, you occasionally need to be able to check an outfit, but it's also a way to make sure that you're ready to re-enter society if you've been boondocking for a long time. For our drawers, you'll notice we have these push button latches and they're great for keeping everything secure while you're driving and prevents them from opening. Our top drawer, we just keep our, our easy access things, our stickers and, and business cards, our keyboard and everything for the computer. Uh, our favorite drawer and the one Rainer's most proud of is the electronics drawer. So this is where we put all of our electronics, all of our charging cable, all of our gear. What makes this so great is having this, the charging 
right inside the drawer. It means you can charge things while driving, which is really important when you're preserving a battery bank without having to worry about all the wires moving around. And it also means you don't have to stare at all the mess of wires on your cabinets um, and countertops while you're, you're in the space. Anything you can do to kind of hide the mess helps a lot, and this has been a really key thing. This is basically our command center for our tiny home. We have our light switch for dimming and brightening our lights. Uh, this one turns on my desk lights. Uh, we have our solar controller, the thermostat. It shows the temperature inside and outside the van, two temperatures that matter a whole lot. Um, and this is our S-bar uh, thermostat. So this lets us control our heater, which is tapped into our diesel fuel tank. Sitting below, you'll see we have a Wii Boost. So this is the repeater that repeats the cell phone signal inside the van. On the back of the van, uh, up on the roof, is the antenna that pulls the signal in. This makes a huge difference for digital nomads being able to have continuous cell phone coverage while you're on the road. Overhead cabinets were really important for expanding our storage capacity. For these ones, to keep everything secure, it's again these marine push button latches that lock everything in place so when you're driving, uh, nothing pops out. Much like an airline, things may have shifted while you're in transit, so we always open a little slowly before we let it fully open, just in case anything is resting against the door. In this overhead, we keep all of our cooking supplies. So my electric toaster, the electric kettle, our pots, bowls, cutting boards, etc. It makes it easy for cooking. Really everything from our cooking standpoint is contained right here. One of the most critical design factors for Rainer and I in our van layout was a workstation. As a digital nomad, I've been working from home for four years, so three years before we even considered van life. Making sure I had a good functioning workspace was critical. So not only do I have an ultra wide screen monitor, which was my compromise for my love of two screens, I also have a full workstation desktop, so a water-cooled, closed-loop uh, computer. Uh, this was, lets me continue with all of my work and store a lot of local content. Considering for us in Canada, data is limited and expensive, having local content has been really helpful. For our movie nights, we are able to pivot our monitor and this is why we have two swivel seats. So now, Rainer can join me for a movie. One of the other important design elements was to have this workstation work for both of us. So this is the other function for our swivel seat. Is we're able to set up one laptop here and have the second person working on the desktop computer. This is one of the ways that we've made this tiny space work for both of our needs. Living in Canada, we know we can't escape all of winter as much as we might sometimes try to. So insulation was really important to us, but so was heat. So for us, we have the D2 S-Bar diesel heater that taps the fuel tank of the van to be able to heat. Um, and this is where we've installed it. So here we're able to see where uh, all the heat comes out. We control it from the thermostat on the wall and it is critical for winter van dwelling. So this is our full queen size fixed bed. It was one of our other priorities in our van build is I didn't want to have to put away my bedding every day. This is just a conventional queen size bed. We did get a special foam mattress that's only five inches thick because ceiling height is limited so we want to be able to sit up straight. We also had these cushions made that tuck into the gap um, between our bed and the wall to make a couch because our computer monitor can also swivel this direction so we can have movie night from bed. Up here along the side, we each have, Rainer and I each have three containers for all of our uh, socks, shirts, pants, etc. Um, that we're able to put in here. Having these be easy to use bins is great for storage. Nothing shifts around while you're driving. You can pull them down to load them up and unload them and put them back in their place easily. We've also added an extra uh, fan, and this fan is a 360 pivot fan, so we can move it in any direction that we need to be able to have an extra breeze. Planning for a sleeping space, we also have our twinkle lights as our bedroom lights, and they're controlled by a switch up by our head, and that makes it easier for going to bed at night. We also wanted to make sure that our fan controller was somewhere easy to use at night, so it's sitting right here on a mount, and that lets us control both of our Max Air fans from bed or on the ground. It turns out I'm not the only short person living in a van, and I've found lots of new friends that have the same system 
I'm short enough that my feet don't actually touch the ground sitting on this seat with the swivel chair. Um, and rather than spend a lot of money and have a new base built by Mercedes put in to lower the seat down, I've opted for the $2 stool. I think I've met about five others that so far have the same step stool. So this has just made it easy to be comfortable while driving and have my feet touching the ground. Privacy and darkness for sleeping is very important for van life. Um, so we worked with one of our friends to build out these. This is a Reflectix in fabric cover. On the outside, it's simply black, and we'll show you how stealth that looks. And the inside is a pattern that we liked. These were designed so that they magnet onto the frame and around the latch. So anyone who's like myself and is always on the lookout for more camper vans, Reflectix in the big windshield is a giveaway for camping. So instead, we've opted for having black fabric over our Reflectix to give us a little bit of extra stealth factor. So Rainer's just gonna pop it in. So not only is our Reflectix fast and easy to put up, but you can see that it blocks out all of the lights. You can't see that we have every single light possible turned on. Because Reflectix is bright, uh, it reflects back any light that's in the, uh, in the area. So having it black like this has made it very subtle that we're camping inside here. So up here in the cockpit, we have a upgraded stereo because both of us really enjoy listening to music. So that was one of the first things we did was upgrade the stereo and the speakers. We also have our dash cam, which has a forward facing and rear facing camera. So the advantage of this is we can select between the different cameras. So right now we have front primary, rear secondary, then it reverses and we go just front camera or just rear. Now this is the way that we normally leave it while driving because we don't have any windows in our van. So this allows us to have a rear view mirror and it also helps a lot with seeing to make sure that we can get in front of other vehicles in traffic. And with having a recorded camera on the front and back, if we ever get into a vehicle collision, then we have proof if it wasn't our fault. Uh, on the dash, you can see that both of our phones are nicely mounted here. Uh, we have a nice steel ball mount with a magnet on the back of the cell phone. This has come in handy a lot with the amount of mileage that we've put on. Uh, we use our phones for GPS and you can just take your phone, slap it on the magnet and you can angle it towards yourself or your partner, whoever's there. And it just works out really well and we would recommend these for anyone looking for a good solid mount. Hello and welcome to the garage. This is where we house everything that is not inside the main living area, such as our water system, our electrical system, our mountain bikes. Uh, we also carry our camp chairs and emergency recovery equipment back here. Uh, so our water system, we have six five gallon water jugs. Uh, there's a hose coming from this jug over to the switching valve on the other side. And we also have another hose from there going over to our water pump, into our two-step water filtration system, up to the tap for the kitchen. Uh, for our electrical system, we have our solar wires coming in, going to our MPPT solar controller, to our bus bars, and from there, distributed everywhere else. We have three 200 amp hour AGM batteries that store all of our power for all of our off-grid capabilities. We have an ACR so that we can charge our vehicle while driving. We also have a 3000 watt inverter charger, which allows us to plug into shore power if needed, and also powers all of our AC devices. Uh, currently, we have been on the road for six months. We have not needed to plug in while we've been on the road, but when we were stationary for a few days with some rain, I think it was about three days before we actually had to plug in. Our solar array is 660 watt panels, which totals 960 watts. With this, we have our panels wired in series parallel. They are mounted on a custom fabricated tiltable rack. And the reason we did this was because living in Canada, you want to have as much sunlight on the panels as possible in that afternoon sun. So we've got it uh, about the optimal 45 degree angle for the northern latitudes that we spend most of our time at. The other advantage of being able to tilt our panels away from our roof 
is that we don't have all the heat trapped underneath. And with this, it helps keep the van cooler on those hot summer days. We have our mountain bikes mounted on a nice slide out here. Uh, the reason for this is ease for loading and unloading. And it also allows us to store all of our gear at the back of the slide. Comes out and we've got our two mountain bikes here. And then we've got all of our gear up at the front as well as our air pumps. Uh, it keeps everything all nice and neat and that way we don't have to worry about them getting in the way. Also gives us access to the back of the garage for if we ever have to repair anything back there. So on this door you can see that we have a fan and our shore power cable. Many people ask us why do we have a fan on the back door of our van. Uh, it is to help in the cold months since we're in Canada that we can pull warm air from the passenger cabin where we sleep into the garage so that our water system does not freeze on us. We've made this ladder which is extra wide. The reason we did that is the way I can actually turn my feet sideways because I've got fairly large feet for climbing up and down so I don't scrape the side of the van. So with this rack it pulls up the panels and slightly pushes them off the passenger side of the vehicle just like this. Now, the reason that we did this was again to get the optimal tilt for living at this latitude. Uh, it's around 40 to 45 degrees, so that makes it nice and perfect. And these panels can stay up through a windstorm, and we haven't had any issues with them. They're actually not that heavy to put back down. So this was our tour of our tiny house. If you liked what you saw, give it a ray thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment down below. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys soon.